Mr. Chairman. Right, with it being after 7 o'clock, I will call the uh, February 28th meeting to order and start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start with the approval of minutes for the 28th and the 14th. I'm sorry, the, the 20th of March, I should have said. This this is the approval of minutes for February 28th and March 14th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Uh, first order of business is 121 Abbott Street. Hi. Uh, I'm Angie Allen with Downer Brothers Landscaping. My client is Chris Salini at 121 Abbott Street. Um, our project is a continuation from the, the March 14th meeting. Um, just a high level summary to refresh your memory. The project is um, in the backyard of the site. Um, outside of the 50 foot buffer area, there is a existing deck that is to be removed and replaced with a new deck reduced in size, as well as a new proposed patio set on a permeable base with a natural stone retaining wall and a planting bed behind. In between, um, within the 50 foot no build buffer, but outside of the 25 no disturbance buffer there, um, is a proposed native landscape planning as well as reworking the existing landscape wall that marks that 25 foot no disturbance buffer. The, that landscape wall was what came into question at the meeting on the 14th. Um, that version, there were two parallel piece sections that were uh, parallel to the house. Um, there was not the section that if you look at the revised copy um, that was in the middle, it has been connected um, as well as two placards pr proposed on each end of the wall in between the end of the wall and the property line uh, to mark that 25 no disturbance buffer. Um, after going back and forth today with Jennifer as well, um, there's been a note that's been added and I have the hard copies to give you, Jennifer, um, that all the landscape walls along that 25 no disturbance buffer will be 24 inches wide and high, which I know is in keeping with what you like to see there. Um, and it's shown on the plan as that, and a note was added. Um, everything else remains the same, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay. Joe? No questions. Yes. No questions. Oh, no questions. Well, two okay. questions. I was like, ready. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you decided to go with the two by two foot wall. You would. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to have blown out of the one by one wouldn't have cut it. Two by two works for us. That's fine. I have no more questions. No questions, Jim. No questions. Uh, I wasn't here for the March 14th meeting, but so it is, there's no waiver requested here, is there? Well, nope. No. no. Yeah, so she's outside the 25. Yep. No, there, there's no waiver. Thanks. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Motion? So I would recommend negative number three to the commission for a local control. There's an existing there's one in the middle. Yeah. yeah, we can take a look to see, but so there is one in the middle. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Go set. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next one is an RDA, uh, 128 Dale Street. Hi, Steve Mason, 128 Dale Street. Looking for an RDA for <coughs> some work being done at the property. Um, we're looking to put a uh, one-car garage, carport, and a master event extension on the west side of the house. Um, most of the work is, most of the construction at least, is outside of the buffer zone. There is a small area of the front entrance that is within the 75-foot no-build of a uncertified 
Vernal Pool, right? It's um, listed on the, the data layer as a um, potential. Potentials are. So I pool. think it is a based on the Barrington Place. It was a um, considered an, an ephemeral pool, which is the town's local bylaw. Hence the 50 foot no disturbance zone and 75 foot no build. This is an existing structure, though, so clearly those. Um, buffer zones apply to new work, but the, the houses were in the pool are there um, and existing. So, okay, okay thanks. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, there is a uh, driveway that uh, on the uh, existing driveway that's going to be removed and um, replaced with uh, landscaping. Um, all that will be the pervious surface of one or another, you know, grass or shrubs or whatever. Um, and that's about it. Uh, any questions? Anything need clarification? Joe? So some of the addition, um, in a prior iteration of this that they saw under a small project, the work was entirely outside of your jurisdiction. They went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and they changed a few things, I believe. Yeah, so the original plan was for actually a two-car garage. Uh, I went to ZBA, got three variances, which I have a copy of here if you want it. We, we're okay. Okay. Um, one was for uh, front setback, side setback, and also for uh, it, the houses in the uh, watershed overlay district. So I needed a variance for that, which was granted. So th that changed things. The driveway is now slightly within jurisdiction in a few, like less than 100 square feet of the addition. Are in right, the so it's like 72 square feet in the back is within the buffer zone. There's about 36 square feet. Oops. Uh, of the front entrance that is within the 75 foot no build. So uh, this is, should be largely an improvement. Um, I guess the only conditions that I would have uh, would that would be that the um, you know the vegetation whatever you propose to plant be submitted in some sort of list to us so that we know yep. it's native vegetation yep. where it's in the no disturb zone. Um, I wasn't sure you've just cited that everything would be plantings. I didn't know if you there had been some talk about gravel or something at some point, but pervious surface. Let me put it that way. So yeah, but I so, think but anything I would get I think, approval from you first. Yeah, you so I think the commission's going to be considering this to be landscaping, lawn, um, native vegetation. You know, I don't know what the purpose of gravel would be. Or the gravel actually, because we're we're thinking of we're on to the right of the driveway, just a gravel pullout. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, those uh, uh, grids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it would be like it was the retaining grids. The stone filled plastic ones. Well, yeah, stone, stone filled plastic So would plastic that be ones, right? uh, as part of the ex the driveway you're proposing on this it'd, side? It'd be to the yes. Right. So anything that's where the existing driveway is being removed, that will all be Vegetation. shrubs or grass or there will be no gravel there. It would be on to the right of the new driveway is what we're thinking. Just as a pullout, but not paved, it would be pervious. So we add that as the, with the option to sure add. Yeah. Yep. So as I'm looking at this going into the driveway, you're talking about to the right across the front of the house you'd have a little hammerhead uh, that would right. be so it'd be like right in this area yeah. okay oh okay in the, in the 50 but not in the 25 no it would be in the um it would be yeah. in, in the 100 not in the 75 right or right to the edge of the 75 be between not. 75 and 100 right okay. truth be told given the curvature of that driveway you're going to have to do that to get your cars out. Yeah, especially on the it's practical. Yeah. Um, do you want to specifically allow that through a condition or to ask him to submit a sketch when he did prior to doing it? I would it? say submit a sketch when yeah. you, if you decide to do it, okay. just so we can. Yep. Doug, Doug, any questions? No. No, no questions? Yeah. And you mentioned that uh, there was extensive storm damage, and you'd oh, like that yeah. So you have some well. photos. You have a lot of trees down in yeah, the there disturbed a lot zone. Of, not trees, but big, huge branches that are down. I, I'd like to clean those up yeah. if I could. I mean, I, I'll leave them if you want, but I'd like to clean those up. <laughs> I, I think you should be allowed to. They're quite a mess. It's not yeah. something that's going to be aesthetically pleasing. And then the last condition um, would be to monument. Um, the existing tree line with some of the placards that the, the commission has for um, just 
just basically saying the area is a protected wetland resource area. Okay. There so is one up there already. I don't know. Yeah. I, think I, I might have seen one. It's, on, Bar on. it's on off of uh, Barrington. Yep. Yeah. That, that's the ones that were required for Barrington. So they generally require that you would put them up to. Oh, okay. If you're doing a yeah. new project. And then, not that they would be at the edge of the 50 foot no disturb because that's in the middle of his existing lawn and house. So it would definitely be at the existing tree line. And then just to note, um, we are approving the wetland line. There were, I think, flags 11 and 12 got taken out by the following list. Oh, right. But um, the only flag I didn't agree with was age 16, so, but it doesn't affect the project. So I think we're, we're good there, too. Okay. Any more questions? Sean's got it. No more questions. Sean. And Jen, do you want to put the markers on, uh, on poles? No, I think he, the existing, there's enough trees out there that we can find places for them, I think. Okay. Thanks. Motion? So let's, uh, I'll, I'll move we, uh, we issue a, a negative three with conditions for erosion, pre and post construction inspections, and uh, appro approval with the administrative plantings. And the uh, turnaround. And the sketch. And, and, and sketch. The, and the, the sketch uh, depicting the turnaround. But I'd like the, the plantings to be approved by her for us. Absolutely. Sure. And uh, that's that will be my motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. All set. Thank you very much. Thank you. We got one on Berry Street, uh, no DP number, 213 Berry Street, uh, NOI. I'll know what's great, the screen here at the MS, the project board, it might help from the distance just seeing the colors and outline stuff, at least for my eyes it does. It's not quite even, but I think we'll do the trick. Hi, I'm Ann McBenemy from Hancock Associates. I'm representing the applicant, Jonathan Berry, for 25 Hesper Street, LLC. Uh, as of this morning, we do have a DEP file number, 242-1729. Uh, there were no technical comments provided, uh, just their typical comment, which says, waiting for a fee to clear revenue received on 327 2018 This may be here four or five months from now, from what my experience has been. <laughs> Um, you needed the cards. Do you also need the tear sheet? There's something that I thought we did. Yeah, probably. Meryl usually the legal Okay. Um, we were here, not myself, but uh, one of my staff from Hancock Associates um, back in January with a request for a certificate of compliance on the same property. There's an existing home on the property, and uh, it is in dilapidated conditions, and is the proposal is to remodel it, um, <clears throat> to restore it. And so that was for um, DEP file number 117, 1117. Um, the, there was an issue when the commission reviewed it with the retaining wall that was around the leach field. Uh, it was comprised of different materials than what was permitted. Uh, sort of a more durable concrete block, it was a, um, a, a pr pressure treated wood and it was starting to bow. So we went back to our client and talked about the options and um, decided that we would withdraw the certificate of compliance um, and file a new notice of intent to tie into the sewer instead of repairing the existing septic system. And that's what brings us here tonight with a, a, a variety of other small projects all within the existing footprint. So um, we will, I had an email exchange with your agent today and we've requested that the certificate of, request for certificate of compliance um, be reopened, put back on the agenda. And I believe we'll hopefully be heard on that in the next meeting in two weeks. Uh, that would basically be just that we're not repairing the wall and everything else is the same as it was permitted to be out there. So we're just um, doing some paperwork housekeeping. Okay, so um, this filing is for work within the 100 foot buffer zone and we have requested a waiver under the 25 foot um, no disturbance zone for the commission and I'll start there. So, um, well I'll start with the wetland boundary. This wetland boundary was delineated on February 28th of this year. I, I was the person that delineated it. It was a 170 degree day that I was able to run out and um, have no snow cover and ice cover and uh, before we got into our whole march. <laughs> and um, There is one, one major change and one minor change in the wetland boundary, both resulting in the wetland boundary being more inclusive of wetlands than the 2004 boundary. In uh, the 2004, there was an area here that the boundary jutted in to real obvious wetlands. Um, on that plan, this was labeled as lawn area, so I believe that that had been maintained in the past, and 
I don't know why um, the delineator didn't include that back in 2004 because it's definitely hydric soils in this area as well as hydric vegetation that's come in. Um, so I, I'm not sure if the person didn't use soils or not or just was sort of um, uh, convinced otherwise because it was maintained, but I couldn't support that boundary. I needed to pull the boundary out into this area. So. Um, so that's, that's that. where the well is. What's that? There's a well out so there. The well is on the, um, it's, not sh it's not shown on this plan, I have to say that's you in the email. This is the, this is the plan for the certificate of compliance, the as built that yeah. we did um, earlier this year. Here's the well right here. See what I mean about how the boundary jutted in significantly here, whereas I'm coming right across like this. Okay. Um, so the well is in place. It is now in wetland, but it yeah. was installed, you know, back more than 20 years ago. Um, so, I also changed the wetland boundary around this wooden shed. It's an existing wooden shed that's in really bad shape. Uh, the proposal is to remove it and to just restore the area with some wetland shrubs and some wetland seed cover. Um, Jen went out today and looked at the boundary and do you want me to speak to it? or you Yeah, I just moved the flag out to the front of the shed. Yep. The topography is very different and there's something funky going on there because two of the holes I dug were all... Um, we're all organic, and then I hit something super hard as if something was buried in there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I, so if, I think was, that's what's causing that to be like that. But. Yeah, and it wasn't a surf water, surf water to the surface essentially saturated right today. Yeah, yeah, that's how it was when I was out there too. So she's made two flag changes that um, she suggested that perhaps instead of having the cost of remobilizing the whole survey crew to go back and locate them, that we could tape measure them in and add them to the plan if that's acceptable to the commission. Those should be easily because they're in areas where there's things to measure off. Yeah, of, so. exactly. So we'll take care of that before the next hearing. Um, and so starting okay then at the wetland boundary, the, we are proposing to remove this wooden shed as I just mentioned, and uh, it's 75 square feet is what we estimated for the full shed. On the notice of intent, I didn't call it an alteration. I called this a buffer zone project. Although we had this activity, we really were not altering well, and we were just restoring it. Sort of nuanced, but. In any case, then we have our 25 foot no disturb zone, which is basically the backyard. Well, I should say this area from this over is uh, wooded and will not be disturbed. It will remain as it is that part of the lot. Uh, it's just this part of the lot that where the existing single family house and associated features are is what's proposed. So we'll just focus on that. Um, the main point of the filing is to uh, remove the septic system which is starting with abandoning um, and cleaning out the septic uh, tank. That was, let's see, the, the note, the engineer's note, uh, stated as um, <clears throat> existing, septic, ex existing septic tanks slash cesspools slash le leach pits shall be properly abandoned, pumped empty, and crushed and filled with clean sand in accordance with 310 CMR 15.354. Uh, the plan is to try to use this existing tr uh, septic tank chamber uh, for the pump chamber for the sewer. Um, the sewer is in Berry Road, out in this area from the, the plans we got from the DPW. Uh, it would be bringing a force main out through the, fit the, the uh, it's out, this is all outside the 50 foot, no build, so it's right here, force main, two inch force main out to a manhole in the street. Um, we would also be removing the septic system, the, excuse me, the leaching field that's in this area that had the, the bowing retaining walls, grading that out. Um, some minor grade shown here. There's no real driveway at the moment out there. There's like a gravel, tiny little place to put your car right there. So we'd like to use this area um, to bring in the gravel. Um, do we have a gravel? There's gravel where we say pavement. Did I use it up? Labeled as I think I said but yeah, uh, so. I was I misspoke. Okay. So a paved um, U shaped uh, driveway in this location and um, some landscaping changing the entrance to the house from the porches here for the walkway into the house right in the front there and just adding some landscape plantings right out in front of the foundation. Um, so I believe that that's the extent of our list of various uh, activities proposed. Did I forget one? Taking Let's see. off the roof. And okay, yes. So up. that wasn't explicitly um, made clear in this notice of intent because I don't believe it's subject to jurisdiction, but would certainly be of interest to the commission. The second floor is uh, not a normal height, uh, so it's going to be taken off um, exact same footprint, so it won't be working outside the footprint of the existing house, other than for scaffolding, um, something like that. 
and we're going to rebuild the second story uh, to be a standard height. Um, so I didn't actually list that as something that was subject to the Wellness Protection Act or the local bylaw, but it is a, a project component that the commission should be aware of. I think more from an activity standpoint, probably the need to stockpile materials and it, have it, exactly and that sort of thing. But they have a very, the limit of work is in nice and tight, so I don't think it, there's any concern that there will be. Yeah, I mean, I think for construction access and dumpsters and stuff, that, so we got to get rid of this leach field out front, and then we've got a perfect area to work with, just parallel to Berry Street in front of the house. Mm -hmm. Joe? So I was just trying to interpret what you meant about raising what's currently a half story, second floor, making it a full second story, and then an attic area or a loft area above that. Um, there, is it going to be a balcony off it or any stairway off it? Anything w bigger in, that would extend beyond where the current house currently ex exists? No, no. Um, we had floated the idea of a potential deck on the house um, and ran that by Jen a month or so ago. And um, we thought it would maybe be able to file a request for determination of applicability if we didn't if we didn't go that route. And then. I just decided that I didn't want to risk us filing an RDA and then come in and say, no, we really need a notice of intent. So anyway, we had two changes. We went with the notice of intent, the full, the full application, and we removed, the, we removed the deck that was going to be on the ground level in this area. It, you know, if, if there's a proposal in the future to put a balcony off the top, um, we certainly notify the commission. I don't believe it would be subject to the regulations under either the state or local, but we certainly we keep lines of communication open. Now, is that just a thought that you're going to do that, or have you already applied for building permits for that? No, the permits are already in process. They're already in process? Yeah. So I just want to be cautious that if you're putting additional structure on it, the building inspector finds there's this inadequate situation with foundation, requires foundation work, then you enter a different issue altogether. Yeah. Right. So the, what right. we're talking about today, if, if considering this addition, upward to be minor, it's only with respect to the wood structure above it. That's Anything right. in the grounds is, is off the table. That's right. Well, but, but you remind me of an important point, sir. So there's an existing porch right here, which is one story. Uh, we are planning to go up to a second story on that as well. It is on sonotubes right now. The best we know that they will be adequate support, but there's a chance that we might have to revisit that once they get in and start um, really being able to evaluate it on the ground. And according to the plan, that, that all of that would be outside of the 50 foot. So. Yes, yeah. but it would be subject to jurisdiction if we've got to do so something with the foundation. Right, so maybe that's no something, I mean, obviously I'm cognizant of it and we'll make the applicant, but maybe it's something to condition just to keep us all on the ball. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you're aware of it and you're fine with it happening, then um, certainly if they came with a, a minor mod, we could administratively approve it since it's already been, you know, put into consideration in this application. I think it will depend. Um, How old are the sonotubes? Not sure. Yeah. <laughs> a second story on top of the second story they're adding on, they're going to add a just no, there is a porch. The porch. There, there is, is a porch, porch. but there is an existing. But it would be part of the second floor, like bedroom set up, right? right? It wouldn't be a porch. Is yes. that correct? You know what I'm saying? So that's a lot of weight. I just wanted to it be is clear. They got to do excavations. That well, the foundation. If they have to do that. They can come in. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I wanted to make clear. Is I'm not worrying about yeah. whatever the structure is. Is that if any gr additional groundwork is required, that this permit isn't going to cover that because we haven't talked about that. Yes, yeah, so we can. That's what I want to be clear on. I, I agree with you. But I think if it's in the same footprint, it could be a minor modification. Mm -hmm. It doesn't rise so to the level of like a full. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. All right. That was that John. was it in my question. Yeah. I'll stop. No questions. Al. No. Ted. I'll stop. Sean. Um, is this a spot where we should put up any type of barriers or, or button yep. markers? So, well, okay, for monetization, I was going to say um, we did fail to plant out. We have a erosion control barrier right here inside the 50 that is the edge of the work. Yep. And then I understand that monumentation will be necessary under the local wetland um, bylaw. A 25 foot sort of isn't workable here because it's out in the middle of the lawn um, for what little yard they have and now less than a flag that this area is wetland. So you had a suggestion of... Yeah, I think, I mean, it's going to have to be some kind of 
in order for them to have any usable space out there be one of our minimum, you know, less than 25. I had suggested 10 to the commission. Um, I do think they need to, um, there's extensive dumping out in the wetlands out there, obviously not the new owners um, doing, but uh, most of it should be able to be removed by hand. I wouldn't yeah. assume that there's any need for equipment, but there's a lot of stuff out there um, that should be cleaned up. And then, you know, it, Again, the, the length of, this is an existing house, there's nothing out there, um, and there is a lot of dumping, and they're gonna remove a shed, so I, you know. If Which is right, in the, right next to most of the, that, the dump area, so. Right, they're doing a, a fair bit of mitigation, so, uh, I mean, it's always up to the commission, but, you know, post might be the more, since it's in the middle of the yard, more amenable. Then. Well, should we establish some type of that boundary between the wetland and you said ten feet? Is that ten what I feet heard off of me? right? That would be allowed to sort of be more of a natural area. You could plant it if you wanted to do shrubs right. along that area, or you know. So I think where you know where it impacts them is that you know now we've got the wetland boundary out here, so they're gonna they're gonna lose ten feet, probably fifteen or so feet with the wetland boundary changing, and then the 10 foot out in this area that'll get them real close. But they still have area that they can get around the house from the side with, you know, a wheelbarrow, you know, gardening hose or whatever, things like that. Or it can come from the driveway side and on the pretty edge that way. I mean, it, it could also go from that point that the, the, the line is gonna jut out a little bit more because it's gonna be on the other side of the shed right, now right. with that flag that yeah. I moved. Um, so, you know, I guess at that narrowest point, it could be maybe five feet and then 10 feet where you have more room. Right. Okay. Well, before you do that, let me just ask you a question. Um, the, the area that we're discussing that's been previously mowed, does it have any uh, open field uh, values for nesting species that might be, no. might grant them it's a, a mess an of annual mowing rambles. on part of it? And then, um, ma I mean, an annual mowing. mowing back in that area might keep the invasive vegetation down. Well, that's that's where I'm going. We ha we have we yep. have an open open field program that we operate with areas just like this where we can get some benefit from a once a year mowing, allow the species to establish. I don't uh, think you're going to get nest. any species out there, but you would well, definitely keep down the brambles. Yeah, you, it's a pretty you, small you footprint. Tell, you tell me that. I rely yeah. upon you. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I was just trying to find a way to. Uh, but annual mowing might keep might, it open. might keep. Um, you know more of the golden rods and things in there, and less of the um, um, you know um, bittersweet and yeah. that yep. sort of thing. No, I, that's a it's a great idea. Would I think that would be you know it make them feel like they have more room, but they'll have well, the monumentation to know that they can't do anything beyond that. But just visually looking out their back windows. So it would just require uh, some agreement between you and Jen as to where the where the boundary should be for the annual mowing. Um, which will be further back, and well, or once a year mowing, as we call it, and then the, the maintenance mowing that would be closer to the dwelling. You guys would just have to find a, a point that you agree upon. Okay. And, so uh, I'm, and, I'm and proposing that it would be 10 feet where they have enough space and where it narrows closer to the house, five. So, so like, kind of give them right. a more even line across. So we're going to end up with that line on a plan for the record. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I, it should be. Like a, we can I mean, I understand what you're saying, but you I think understand what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, well I think sure they should represent it on the as built for sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. So the this is the as built that we'll be backing on. So this this area right here is it's actually beyond the wetland. It's back up to almost the obvious wetland here has been what was maintained in the past. It was <laughs> on the permit site plan for, this, for the house. Excuse me for the septic system from 2004. It said um, it was a Hancock plan, and it said lawn area out here. Yeah, so uh, and there's like an old little metal fence that's out along here, like sort of demarking the edge of a yard. I think we're familiar with all these places on Berry Street. We've had some very interesting filings come okay. from Berry Street, and uh, so that's that's the reason why I was even discussing the possibility okay. of the annual. Um, t one last question for you: um, the well that's uh, depicted on the plan out in the wetland is that operational? I believe so. Is that, I mean, nobody's lived in the house for. A, for is that going like to be the source of water, or is it going to be town water? Um, we're uh, we're going to have to find out what what the status is of it. Well, because that's going to that's an activity in the wetland because yeah. that's where the well is. Again, right. recollection that well was new at one of the filings that we reviewed. Well, yeah, it, it was for the, on the 2004. It was installed along with the septic system and the permit that we need to get the certificate compliance. All right, so on. we need to, we need some information on that. Okay. 
if, if, it, if, if it's going to operate, the they, they gave us a number. Um, yeah, they, they got one. Um, oh. the, the, uh, 1729. Oh, okay. Yeah, they got, they got the number today. Um, but we're getting a revised plan for the No, new, I know they're coming the back. I'm just, that's why I'm trying to get this stuff fleshed out now. Right. Okay, so in the revised plan, we got the two new wetland flags. Mm -hmm. Um, the, where the location of the monumentation would be, the yeah, five and ten feet. You want to feet. send me a draft, and we can <coughs> okay. do that. And then Great. the limit of mowing, okay. the annual mowing. And uh, what's the commission's um, deadline for submittal of new information before the Generally next? Generally, a, a week before. Okay. Is, is what we the seven we have the, a seven the day is, The bylaw is five days. I, seven before. day policy. I think Sean had some more questions. Oh. No, no, thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So. When this discussion started, there was some discussion relative to a former filing that's still open and does not have a certificate of Right. So typically, we, typically, and this is not typical, we would require that to be closed out. So is this looking to be a, a gonna, unified front? No, they're going to file for that at the next meeting. The problem was we couldn't close it out because it wasn't built in compliance, you guys. Right. Made that pretty clear. But this filing will replace that. So hence, we can close it out. So without it being in compliance because they're going to get rid of it. Okay. Like a mulligan extension. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're familiar with this application. They, they, I do. They had the railroad timbers around the septic yeah, system. Yeah, I remember. Sure. Okay. But since they're not going to have a septic system, I don't think there's any Good reason to, yeah. to keep that going. Sure. And Jen, should I also show on the plan, like at least in like an envelope, like the area where debris will be removed? I think maybe a plan note just saying okay. trash in, within the resource yep. area will be removed or in, or in the no disturb. Right? Yeah, no disturb. Okay. Dump the location, stuff like that. It's kind of all over the place. I mean, it gets sparser away from that shed, but there is stuff. Yeah, there's a big propane tank that's rolled into the wetland over on the other side. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, yeah. it's kind of wide, got widespread. It. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Sorry. Yeah. No, they're going to make it better, right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It will definitely be better. That's, that's, what, we want. Want. that's what we're looking for. That's what we want. All right, so we need to continue. Yes. So I would plan to issue this at the next meeting as well, Ann. So you okay, can great. On that. Thank so you. Thanks. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And what's the date of the next hearing? Two weeks from today? Yeah, the 11th. 11. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. See you then. Yep. Yeah. Happy mm -hmm. Easter. Thank you. Happy spring, hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, next one is an enforcement order. Uh, oh, no, excuse me. 242 uh, uh 500 Bloxford Street. Look at you trying to skip over a few things, getting us out of here. Quick. I'm moving right along. It was a good try. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at the last meeting, you asked um, the applicant to reconsider making this filing compliant with the um, with the uh, no build no disturb requirements of the site um, they have since submitted an alternatives analysis in a memo the memo being a lot lengthier than the alternatives analysis but I hopefully you've had a chance to review those there also have been submitted since the last meeting um, letters from two abutters one um, for the project, one against the project. Both of those are also in your materials. Okay, go ahead. So, um, once again, Brian Vaughn from Smolak and Vaughn for the applicant. Mike Donovan, um, at, at the last meeting, I, th I think you were probably pretty close to denying us out of the gate. And um, one of the, the big issues we saw was that it, the, the commission was looking at this situation as a situation where we were creating our own hardship. And um, we understand we have a, a, a challenging site. and. We would like to at least try to get to the science of it, but in order to do that, um, I, I, I wanted to walk you through the history of the site, the situation, um, just to make sure everyone understood what we were dealing with. And in this case, we're 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 dealing with you know, not a situation where we have one lot of land with 
one owner or someone looking to develop you know, purely for profit. We're looking at a situation where we have three separate lots, three individual owners, and um, the hardship exists in their land, particularly more so for two of them than, than one of them. They happen to be brothers, and um, because they're brothers, probably they've been able to come to an, an agreement between them where um, they're hoping to be able to, to salvage some value in the land. Um, the way I would, would look at this is, is not so much as a subdivision of a parcel into three lots, but um, expanding the size and conformity of two of the lots to reduce it from three lots to two. Um, <clears throat> I know one of the um, one of the the issues that we had raised last time was was with respect to the fact that the lots have been taxed as three separate buildable lots, and and they have, and there's been a substantial amount of of money that's been paid by each of these individuals. Um, part of the problem in looking at it as a as a single lot is we end up with a situation where more likely than not what would end up happening is that we, we don't have the parcels combined at all. We have two people without any value um, and you know, this, you know whether or not they, they would or wouldn't be successful, I don't know. We haven't looked at it because we think that this is the best solution. Um, but for those two individuals, they might, might be left with nothing except possibly trying to pursue a, a takings claim. Um, whether or not they'd be successful, I don't know. Um, and whether or not they would want to do that, I don't know. We just think that, that this alternative to try to get um, two buildable lots out of this land is the best alternative for, for everyone involved. We think it really kind of improves the, um, the face of the property. And we think it would be consistent with, with what's out there now. Um, <clears throat> Joe? First is um, that recitation. I heard three phrases that alarmed me the first time, second time, and more so the third time. Twice was used was the phrase no value, and then once was without any value. And then lastly, summarizing where my mind was going through the whole discussion was a uh, building a case for statutory taking, uh, to which I would say that no evidence of uh, value of any sort has been presented or uh, uh, substantiated other than, than the suggestion that that's the case. There is some value, and I think uh, you know, laying groundwork for a statutory taking is simply you know, improper. Because um, I don't think it's, this is not the forum to do that. But it, nonetheless, it's on the record, so I want my statements to be on the record that uh, I believe there is value regardless of what happens in this. And I think the test of uh, statutory taking is pretty clear on on that value question. It's not just substantial, it's, it's complete loss of value. Um, I have not dived into the um, alternatives analysis. I've, I've skimmed it, which is not at all acceptable to, uh, to a valid review. I think I really do need to dive into it, so I'm, I'm going to defer any further comment until I have a chance to do that. And if, Probably won't be from this table tonight. Um, the alternatives analysis is actually only one page. Um, the memo that um, the memo I think is is more Brian, telling. It's it's the the sketches I, I've seen. Right. And the um the, but the alternatives analysis as to the options that they present are there's two options. Mm -hmm. One would be that they put a single family house on each of the three remaining lots of what they considered the family estate. Um, that wouldn't be possible because one of the lots is completely would not meet any of the zoning or the wetlands setbacks of any of any sort. Um, a lot of it has to do with their claim that development around these lots significantly contributed to um, their being wet. That may or may not be true. I'm not going to, you know, I mean, Duncan Drive was built, Wellington, you know, there's all, there has been plenty of development, but the point is under the Wetlands Protection Act, 
you consider the lots as they exist now. Sure, sure. So they, their value, you know, in the 1970s or whenever we may be um, talking about in the memo, has no relevance today and does not to DEP. Yeah, I think just given the complexity of, of the arguments that have that have been presented in the oh yeah, it definitely this meeting, and that, I, I got to give it a good review. Yep. Um, it was, and whether it something I buy into or not, you know, it just remains to be seen. I'm all set. Okay, Doug. <coughs> was the uh, first proposal before us for three lots? No, it was always for two. Always two. just the two. The two. Uh, and there's no, there's uh, this be, there's no dwellings on these lots. At the there, there is there is one. Okay, it's not showing. It's it shown. It's very faint. House. It's almost in the street, the house to the right. It, um, it just this is something I'm seeing actually for the first time right now. My client just provided me, but I guess to the point that that Jen just raised and that we were talking about as with respect to value, um, Mike Donovan just handed me his tax bill, which um, let's see, this one is for. This is current tax bill, and and it's for tax map 41, which I, I, I think, Jen, is the lot you were suggesting, uh, tax map 41 was the lot you were suggesting would really not be Yeah, developable. if you look at yeah. the aerials of the lot, and, and it's I, almost completely And wide. I would agree. We know we have a, a very challenging site, but his tax bill for that lot right now has um, an assessed value a taxable value of one hundred and eighty thousand two hundred dollars, right, and he's being his quarterly bill on this was um, six hundred seventy four. The annual bill was twenty six fifty three. Right. So, so I, I mean, these are current taxes, but this is also, you know, we can look at it. it it's something that's happened over a number of years, and and these guys aren't aren't every scientists. Every they single January, we have an opportunity yeah. to file the bank. And it's not this more that grants yeah. you that you know, But I, I certainly do um, the, the legwork to, to, for plenty of people who want one. Like if they want to know that their lot is undevelopable, I've written many a letter to many a, a lot owner saying, yes, you know, more than 75% of your lot is wetland and you should not be being taxed as a buildable lot. But mm. that's neither here nor there at this point. And this isn't the huh. forum to which to argue that. What we have is a, it's a cold science. We have, we have a pretty accurate delineation process. We know what the science is, and then we have a set of rules and regulations that we follow pretty stringently with some, some minor waivers from time to time. And, um, and we take all those in context and make a decision pretty consistently. And, um, and I don't think we're doing anything differently this time around, other than asking, you know, what proof do you have using the science and the regulations to, to justify the creation of, of the, the reconfiguration of, th of three lots into two and the de de demolition of the one house and creation of two new houses. It's pretty basic stuff. And um, the regulations is what's driving the, the, the issue here. It's not so much the delineation. We know where the, we know where the line is. Uh, the wetland line doesn't change substantially because uh, it's, it's, it's a combination of hydrology, soils, and plant life. And um, it's usually the soils that take the longest time to change. But if you are uh, suggesting that a budding or, or, or area uh, proximity to other development has, has changed the hydrology, well, there might be a case there. Or because that hydrology has changed the plant life, well, there might be a case there. But it's unlikely those are going to alter your soils that quickly, which is why you use that third criteria in determining a, a wetland in, in the full context. So um, unless we're arguing the validity of the line. Well, we haven't had to prove to ORAD. So we're not arguing the validity of the line. We're not arguing the validity of the line. So the science has proven the line is the line. And, and, and I, I think absent any contradictory soil condition, I, I, I think the claim that an abiding Development over recent history, as opposed to eons, uh, is contributing to the to this becoming a wetland is, is, I think, unproven. I think I said three times I'm done. 
<laughs> I am done. If, if I may uh, just respond to that quickly, my name is uh, Dennis Creech. I'm an engineer for the applicant with Andover Consultants. Uh, the, the delineation of the line, as, as Jen stated, it, it was uh, confirmed via an ORAD. And the delineation of the line, the, the two houses, as proposed, could be built if it was just the wetland setbacks, the 25-foot and the 50-foot no-build. Uh, what we're dealing with is the the more stringent ephemeral pool requirements. Setbacks. Correct. So we're, we're requesting the, the waivers be reduced for the ephemeral pool setbacks for the for the non-build, for the no-build and non-disturbance. So the the proposal does meet the the requirements for the the wetland setbacks. We and we understand that those were locked into place via you know the um, the soils, the hydrology, and the and the plants. Um, but the waivers are for the the more stringent ephemeral pool setbacks associated with those resource areas. So my comments were based almost as a rebuttal to what was suggested as in the narrative alternative analysis that some blame lies with development in the neighborhood, which you've just pretty much negated. I, I disagree. I, the, the, we agree that the wetlands are today what they are. I think what we said in the narrative was that the reason they are what they are today is because of development in the surrounding area before the regulations were as stringent as they are. Um, and we're asking for the, the ephemeral pool waivers to allow us to, to build in the 75-foot in the no build and, and to disturb in that 50-foot in the no disturb zone of the ephemeral pool habitat. Understood. Okay. Any other questions? No. Yeah, um, actually, I, I want to ask you about that, what you were just talking about. So I'm looking at your plan. Um, I understand the alternatives analysis. I understand your position. So I'm looking at the plan. So um, is it your position that but for the two ephemeral pools, you could meet the 2550 on those two, two lots proposed on, um, well, I can't see the sheet number, but the it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the first one. Yeah. Correct. She, we so would, the, 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 the one waiver that we'd be requesting for the actual resource air delineation, if we, if we're the eliminate the ephemeral pools or the, the uh, leaching field, uh, so 100 foot setback required per the, the town bylaw. We have a 75 foot setback. Yeah, uh, no, I, I got, I got yeah. the setback, so that's what I'm trying to understand. But for the, but for the pools? The driveway. So the driveway could be flipped to the other side of the house. Right. Okay. So, yeah, you're, you're correct. But for the pools, the, the okay. lots could be developed within the, the allowable footprint. Good. The two, the two houses? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, nothing further at this time. Ted? No question. Just so I know I'm reading the plan correctly, um, is, the, is the no build 75 for the ephemeral pool cutting through the middle of the proposed dwelling on the right? Yes. Okay. Also the one on the left, too. Yes. Yeah, and the one. I don't have any other questions. Uh, so, well, the first thing we have to do is vote on the waves. Just so. to be clear on the, on the ORAD. The ephemeral pools were identified and, and, and verified it through that process, or are they the still suggested to be? The ephemeral pools meet the criteria for ephemeral pool. They, without um, looking for species come this spring, which is right, right about now, mm -hmm. um, they wouldn't be certified yep. vernal pools. I mean, from the looks of them and the fact that we're in endangered species habitat, they're, I mean, to say they wouldn't support wood frogs would probably be a stretch. But, um, I mean, you have to, the, this, the standards for certifying them are more stringent, and we could certainly go that route if that's something you want to consider, that they send somebody out there and, and well, I think determine Al, whether they're certifiable. I think I've identified a very pivotal no, I'll, point. I'll just, if, if, the, if that's the only issue and the ephemeral pool definition is not yet fully confirmed, the presumption is there, yeah. the argument might be determine it, you know, well, do they, the science and determine it's not an ephemeral pool. Well, well, it wouldn't uh, be that they couldn't be ephemeral pools. They meet the definition of ephemeral pools mm -hmm. without without the species. Without the species. They don't vernal meet pools. the certified vernal no, pool what, statute. What I wanted to understand. Right, I, me, I get what you mean. Is that is that the issue? Yes. Because there's a lot of stuff. It's a busy plan. There's, there's it is a very busy plan. There's six million flags out there, but boil it down to what it is. It so is something pools, they could. And yeah. they can meet the 2550, but for those pools. Well, I think someone needs to redo the plan with fewer lines on it to say that that's the truth because well, I, I can, can see I, the driveway for I, I, for certain is in the 50. I'm looking right at it. I think it's pretty clear. I can see it. I'm not having any trouble. Yeah, the house the house is just outside the 50. 
Yeah. I think the other driveway is also in the 50, it looks like. The, it both the driveways, which I know that the commission does consider a, a build or a structure in the, in the setback, so those could be adjusted um, if those waivers were granted. We could flip the driveways, I think, as Commissioner Manzi said. I mean, if that's something you want to consider, I would definitely want to see that the that the vernal pools don't don't contain um, obligate species, because that's where the upland habitat comes more into play. Obviously. Well, if it's the commission is lacking some information. The plan is, is has an issue with the administrator. Um, oh, I don't have an issue with the plan. Well, I'm I mean, just saying it's a lot of lines to, to talk about what Al is talking about. Well, no, I'm just, uh, you know, the, 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 the waiver is based on that. Yep. Um, I, I see no problem with, with um, I think, I think the, as a commission as a whole, from what I perceive, is that the waiver would be very difficult to get both approved, to get approved. Um, I think a, a, a new plan, That we could pick could compare with this one might be helpful um, but the way the plan stands now I, I I don't think I think you'd have a hard time getting your waivers approved uh, so we only need one waiver Jen are we, ta are we talking about getting these certified as ephemeral pools rather than ephemeral pools which in my opinion is just a, a way of trying to make things vernal pools that haven't been certified and apply the vernal pool standards to that. I'm just trying to there's no difference in the standard. I, I'm, I, I'm just trying to understand. No, I know, the but, but the thing is, usually it was yeah. it had to be a vernal pool in order for that standard to, to be applied. Yeah. But now the, the local bylaws come up with ephemeral pools, yeah. so that they say, well, it's going to be a vernal pool anyway. Well, they're asking for the waiver either way. That's right. the way. So that's what I latched onto. If it's not a vernal pool, asking. if it's not a vernal pool, they need the waiver under the local bylaw. Yes. But, but I would be more inclined to grant them the waiver if it's not a vernal pool. But if it turns out to be a vernal pool, then you're up the creek. I, I think that I think that what Commissioner Manzi and Commissioner Lynch have both stated that we're, we'd be requesting the waiver, whether it's a certified vernal pool or whether it's just an ephemeral pool under the local bylaw. The the thing with vernal pools is it's and Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, in the Wetland Protection Act, it's, it has to be certified at the time of the submission of the notice of intent for it to be considered a vernal pool. And I know well, the town bylaw no, treats it. you can certify a vernal pool whenever. But mm -hmm. for the for the purpose of the filing. But for the what, purpose of the filing. What this you, commission is saying is, what you're what they're struggling with is a local bylaw issue. Correct. So it's a waiver of their local bylaw statutes that you're looking yep. for. So what I'm hearing some what I what I think Mr. Vaughn has maybe alerted the commission to is that perhaps this plan could fully comply with the 2550, in which case. I think they would want to see that plan, but I think to, if they were to grant those waivers, I think what I'm also hearing is that they would want to see that the, the vernal pools are not certifiable, technically. Um, if they are, I think they're saying your waivers are, at least what I'm hearing, not likely. I mean, that's the crack mm -hmm. that I've driven those wedge into. I'm not sure it's going to open any that's wider. That's what, what I'm hearing. Uh, but but I, I can tell you that if the presumption is an ephemeral pool supports obligate species, which is why our bylaw is written the way it is, then to grant a waiver without any backup or any supported documentation is just irresponsible for us to consider. So at the very least, we could take this presumption of the ephemeral pool being vernal and verify through a scientific biological habitat analysis that it, that it doesn't support those species. This is the time of year to actually do that. Um, then at least you could come in with the argument and say, please grant the waiver, even though it has all of the physical characteristics where it might support, our analysis shows it does not. And, uh, and then we would review that analysis to show it's valid. And at the very least, I think it gives us something, a little bit, to hang some uh, thread of a uh, hat on to, 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 to justify any consideration of waiver. But right now, to simply waive it with, with the presumption that it, don't worry about the ephemeral pool. It's going to be open season. Ephemeral pool for, forevermore. Uh, that, that's that's what I was trying to explain. You, you, get, you have we have to verify that, and, and and show us a plan that you could put two houses 
that that vernal pool is not a vernal pool. But if it's a vernal pool, then the, the, you'll never get a waiver approved. Never. So the revised plan you'd be looking for is the kind of, as Commissioner Manzi suggested, swapping the driveway so it's completely outside of the 50 foot. Everything, yeah, what's everything. shown here, that's not the case. Yeah, I don't want you wasting right. engineering time or ink on, on a drawing to submit to us something that until you've a certain of the pool yeah, status. I, I would get the but when you've determined, if you go out and do your study and say, wow, we have some great confidence, doesn't support any of the vertical uh, biology, then uh, then you might come back and say, you know, here's our analysis, I hope you agree. And because we're so confident, we've revised the plan accordingly to show what complies in every other way. I would, I would go after the rental pool first. I mean, they're on the move. I mean, as of, as of today, down where I well, work, we were. Yeah. Yeah, where well, we, we were today. Rain, mm -hmm. It's going to. Yep. Yeah. You'll see migration. So I would. Again, it's good. I mean, I, it could be this weekend if it rains. It could be, you know, till you see egg masses and hear wood frogs chorusing, could be a whole. That's why. I think the commission, if you had to ask me why the bylaw is written the way it is, it's because vernal pools, you know, depending on timing and depending on when you pr propose something, certifying them could, can be difficult, so. Okay. Yeah, I, would, I would suggest. Uh, they might not be vernal. Pardon me? They yeah. might not be vernal. They might not, but yeah. I, I think. But they might not be. Yeah. But given the habitat of the general area. Yeah, it, there's it, a lot of vernal It's, it's a very there. slim. Possibility, but you know, it's part of the part of the, the application process. So we would, we would never, waiver. without without the proper information, we would never approve a project without checking and being approved first. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I think the thing too is this doesn't even look. It doesn't appear to me as though you could get one house on there. With, with well, I think you get one. I, I doubt if you're going to do that with the uh, septic system and everything. That not in not in the uh, 75 foot setback. You know, I also don't want to assume everyone on the board is comfortable with that strategy. I was just looking down the table trying to get a feel for that, too. I'm not even sure, even it's though tough, I'm suggesting it, that in the way. end, I certainly would sign on the science, but I, I'm not so sure that uh, that it, it's crystal clear that we'd have to document it in such a way to I'm, make I'm sure this is not present. I'm only leaving time. the door open a crack, so... I'll make it easy for you. If they're not vernal, I would vote for the waiver. Okay. Okay? okay? I'll make it real easy for you. Well, I, I could get outvoted. Yeah, I could get outvoted six to one, but I would vote for the waiver if they're not vernal. Well. Yeah. I would examine that issue if uh, if it turns out that way. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to reserve my And, and I, think, I think we owe it to the applicant. So you're to, getting to, a feel to, from to the commission. I think if you are going to explore the science of it, make sure you find someone who's duly qualified to. And I I would say, you know, might want to run that by me before you. Okay. I, don't think every, I think everybody can look for things. I think there are people who are far better at it than others. Sure. And we did, and I know that we, the, the ORAT or the NRAT was submitted in, in spring of last year, and I believe you walked the site. It was the ORAT. It was ORAT past was, the, it was, it was I late think, April, yeah, so it might have been. I think it was well past when, when okay. things had happened out there last so year. I don't know, this, this might information, we might already have it at our fingertips. There from, was nothing from, more saying there was, the water was low. I, I, I don't okay. think it was the, I mean, I think now is. Yeah, ideal. no, well. Well, I would, I would uh, if you're going to see if the pool is run, I would definitely, you're going to hire somebody. Um, I would definitely run the name of the person you're going to hire. Two gen first. Well, I just are there credentials or are there credentials? Just, have appropriate I, I just I, I don't want it called into question that who you hire yeah. has anything mm -hmm. to do with this. You want to get a wetland scientist, not not just a or a, you know just someone a biologist again, or something. You know? yeah. Well, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, there are again people who do wildlife habitat evaluations and those sorts of things. The the certificate the qualifications can be a little bit different. Yeah. Because, like I said, under normal conditions, this 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 application will probably get blown out of the water. But we're trying to do our best to make. I mean, it's not like I said; it's not fair for the applicant to pay taxes on a piece of land that he can't use. Right. And we, been, and we and we appreciate the commission. This commission that that's been the direction that we've taken. We don't just flat out deny somebody unless it's egregious. Tom's not going to 
to lead all taxes. On yeah, the I know. Keep, yeah. <laughs> no, the town wants its no, money. No, okay, exactly. File that exactly. abatement if you think you so, need one. Yeah. Its money. I mean, it's got value of surplus land, so there'd yeah. be something. Right, there is, a, there is an abatement process. It's not one I ever worked on, but I have certainly have worked on plenty where people have gotten the abatement. It, well, again, not every lot out here would have gotten that abatement, but no. I can say that, that one particular lot. But you know which direction to, to go. Yes, yep. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the way to go. So we, we there we, are butters with, with concerns. I don't know after this discussion. Well, we're going to continue the we're going to continue anyways. No, I know, we'll but they still there should be heard. Here. Yeah. An opportunity to add yeah. to it. Do the butters want to speak? Do any butters want to speak? I provided a uh, written statement. So I was yeah, we, I did read. I did read. So we have we, we we do have we do have letters from a butters that that will be entered into the record, and you're welcome to get up and talk at any time during the public hearing. And it's going to be the meeting is going to be contingent, so we, we have another, a, def a definitive hearing. what we have. We don't really have know what we have right now. It doesn't look good. Maybe they can prove us wrong, but uh, we're we're optimistic. <laughs> so, uh, two weeks up. Okay. So weeks. isn't the applicant? Um, <laughs> two weeks enough time. Two weeks time. Um, yeah, can we continue two weeks? And if the you can always you can always yeah. you can always bounce right. Off. If the okay. The other thing too is if you if you've got a list of scientists that do this work that are acceptable to you, if you could give them that list, that would make it perhaps quicker than them. Yeah, we have done people. a lot of that here in town, yeah. but I I you know consultants between um, the town that I serve on the commission for. Um, actually, the, the only person I can think of offhand who's doing vernal pool monitoring for us at this time is Patrick Garner on Merrimack Condominiums. So he, he would definitely be an option. Um, I have worked extensively with um, Wetlands Preservation Inc. Again, we're not recommending, I'm just telling you we people who I've done well. vernal really? pool work with. Sea camp? Um, um, on the Turner Hill Golf Course in where I, I serve on the commission. He's done extent. They've done extensive vernal pool monitoring there over 10 years with the vernal pool monitoring, mm -hmm. um, for which we get reports on. And then um, you're saying the sea camps. Sea camps. Um, do vernal pool. There are, but there are far more. Yeah, there's, people a, there's a whole bunch yeah. that can do this work. I just, I'm just saying, if you have someone you prefer to work with, then you know, I'm just telling you people whose credentials I know. Yeah, I'll, I'll if you got somebody it. else, then run them by. Yeah, please. Yep. And we'd be happy to consider anyone. Anyway. Yeah, we don't want to waste people's money. Um, I move that we consider this for two weeks. Uh, yeah. We have a motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one is the uh, enforcement order 63 crossbow lane. So I don't think anyone's here for 63 crossbow lane. Um, I, oh, I have a, a photo for you. This was something I discovered while reviewing for um, a generator permit. Um, wasn't something I expected to find, but um, and the applicant is is aware that his shed and I guess what I'd call a beach area don't have permits. <laughs> yeah, they get a beach with Salisbury Beach and they have a beach. Yeah, yeah they have a beach. Son, of, son of a beach. And Actually, that's cool. But yeah. that is how it used to look. So yeah, that um, was a beach too. Yeah, unfortunately, sailing. from the t I had asked him to be at this meeting with a plan for after the fact permitting or restoration, but the fact that we then got feet of snow meant that we couldn't do the sort of investigation on his property. I did go out there to assist him in this, and so I would ask that you continue him to the April 25th meeting so that I have time to address this. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is 25 Hollow Tree Lane. I'm trying to figure out where the pond is. Oh, you have photos. Sorry. It's Salem Street. Okay, Salem Street is on the other side. Mr. Hartman. Back again. You know English? Yeah. So the question is that. I'm sorry, if you're a vernal pool expert, I would have mentioned you too, but I don't know. It's a pond. He is too much work. No, he, he doesn't want that one. He doesn't want that. Doesn't want that one. You know, Greg. Greg generally comes in here with the uphill battles. Yeah. I, I'd say nine out of ten of his jobs are always uphill. I can't believe you he can't doesn't pull, need any more uphill battles. He can't pull battles. a rabbit out of your hat. I haven't personally stood in the vernal pool with Greg. And we'd, we'd be we'd be whistled. We'd we'd get whistled for piling on if we gave you that one. That's right. Okay. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Hold on. 
sure. Okay. Struggling tonight with our. It should be in here, right? Mm -hmm. Where am I going wrong? Meeting agenda. There it is. So when we were last here to discuss this, um, the commission had asked us to consider a few, a few ideas, um, one of which was to stop the proposed fence at the 50-foot no build, which we've, we've done on a revised plan, and to consider adding some plantings uh, to the portion of the alteration that was within the 25-foot no disturb. Originally, we were proposing just to see if the stumps regenerated and to allow the shrubs to come back and to dust all the altered areas with a seed mix. That still might work, uh, but there's no harm in speeding up the process by proposing some plantings, so we've done that. Um, we added, it's, it's a small area in the no disturb zone, so we added three red maples and three pepper bush. Uh, the area is dominated with pepper bush, so I expect more than the three that we're planting to come back. Um, but this will certainly help speed up the process. And we're still planning on uh, scarifying the ground surface and dusting it with a, a native seed mix. Um, and then, of course, the monitoring of the area for two years to make sure that this works. And the property owners understand that if, if some of the other areas don't come back, um, that they may have to put in additional plantings down the road. Uh, but the idea is to keep it free of invasives during the two years and get things to come back. Joe, and the fence, too. So we're still yep. administering this through enforcement order. The, the end product will still be an enforcement order with specific conditions and time, timetables. We're not looking to do a... a so I, we would revise the enforcement order based on this submission. Um, the only thing I would add to what Greg said is I, th I think... Um, we wanted to look at this in spring to see what the chances of regeneration were in June. I think everything, right. all the other enforcement orders had been continued to, so I think we would still want to look at this at that point in time, just like the rest of it. Yeah, I think we'll know, and the thought process there was, I think we'll know pretty quick if some of these stumps are going to regenerate or not. Okay. You will. And more of a curiosity, nothing to you, Greg. What do we hear from the southerly neighbor uh, excuse me i guess it's the easterly neighbor did they ever come in i've ever um, acknowledged they, they were to be um at this particular hearing but there are circumstances for which we, we have we, continued we them and the others to um to the 20 okay to the uh, the june date which we, is we here. gave we gave a blanket continuance joe to all all parties yeah well i just want to make sure is that yeah, everybody's all the work June is complementing each 13th. other, not 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 butting up against each right, other. So, so far, everything is is working t uh, the same. Okay. June thirteenth would be the date that everybody is proposed to be back. Okay. And we're doing our best to stay separate from everyone else because oh, I, I know that. And you and I thank well, you. You, you good, now have good the smallest reminder. area that you have to restore. So that's you might right. As well, just stay out of the stay out of the fray and just fix it. Right. And I think the the initial thought out here was that the bulk of this alteration was on our client's property. But the way that the lot jogs in, I'd say at least 90% of the clearing was on the abutters' property. On the Winter Street property, right? That's right. Yes. Yep. But that's, so that's we'll, we'll deal with that one in June. Right. Yeah. Okay, well said. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah. I'm also. I, I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> no questions. And the so fence, no fine questions. with the fence out, outside the 50? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have the fence. Yeah, the fence lies on me. Yeah, but it was in the no build in, no disturbance. Is this the fix for your client? Yes. I, hi. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate <clears throat> everything I'm, you're doing and, and hearing in this case. Um, in this, extending that to June, does that mean that I have to come back uh, no. with Greg, or is this you're just extending the paperwork to complement what's going on? Right. So the other filings are going to be due back with their restoration plans on June 13th. I think prior to that date, we included your property in being seeing what 
what's coming back. By June 13th, you know, things are going to have start to sprout it, leafed out. I don't think we want to consider if we're going, you know, based on what we're seeing coming back, not consider that your property may or may not be coming back at the same rate or that additional things may be required of all properties based on what we're seeing out there come spring. I think we all acknowledge that there's nothing to see right now, but that we would definitely have some idea about revegetation come But that's June. a progress report, not necessarily delivered at the public right, meeting. Right, because he's already Compliant. submitted his restoration plan, and, it, and like I said, the revised enforcement order will include that, you know, if in two years things haven't revegetated. But I do think if we go out there in June and we're not seeing things sprouting and not seeing things coming back, it may be a time when you want to reconsider rather than waiting two years and then deciding you have to start doing planting and then monitoring planting for two years that you would want to have a head start on what needs to be done. But, that, I mean, again, that's up to you. Just well, the time to assess. It's just an assessment. That, that's why we need the, 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 the uh, deadline until June. We just want to see what's happening. Yeah, see that, what's going on. <coughs> that's you, you don't necessarily have to come back. No, to that's fine. No, that's fine. And, and that could be our first, you know, if, if the plantings go in early spring, that could technically be our first right. monitoring right. inspection right. report to set a baseline. Exactly. Plus, I'm sure you'd like to see what see what that your, your neighbors are doing also. Well, yeah. I mean, we moved here 26 years ago because of the forested area and the habitat. The beautiful location is gorgeous. And to have this happen was devastating, devastating to my wife and I. We basically went out that day, went for a walk, did shopping, came home, and found somebody cutting our trees down. It, what can I say? I, I, there's nothing to say when you see that in your mind. There's not that much more I can say except it was a dramatic shock to my wife and I. We, from right out of the gate, we appreciated that. We, it was pretty clear of the per predicament you were and you and your wife were in. That was horrible. And, uh, and I think even though it's a process that we're going through here, that it's, it's actually a friendly one. <laughs> it may seem intimidating, but we're actually working with, we feel as badly as you do on this. No, I appreciate it. And I know you have, I know you have to do what you have to do. And I, com I completely understand that. And, uh, and I respect what you do, and I, and I mean that. Um, I appreciate everything you've done to this point in working with Greg and, and Jennifer working with Greg and so forth. But from my wife and I's point of view, it gets extremely expensive when you go out to take a walk, have lunch, come home, and someone says, well, now you have to go buy a car with cash. That's about what it amounts to. So it's been very difficult for us to deal with that. It has. Sure. We, you know, we've been there 26 years, and it's a beautiful area. Now I need to put a fence in. That wasn't part of our initial plan when we moved in, but... You know, things do happen, Once unfortunately. Once everything starts growing out there and everything's green, yeah. it'll look all different to you. Good, yeah. good. It's going to look different to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank motion. you, everybody. All right. Um, so, motion would be to issue the revised enforcement order based on the newly submitted um, restoration plan. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thanks. Thanks. So the next four matters are being continued. The, the airport had submitted these a while ago, and um, Randy Christensen and I are working diligently on closing them out. And then both Randy and I went on vacation, and we came back, and we said, what happened back in February when we last met on this? And so... <laughs> um, Time to regroup. Right. So we're asking for... Two of these are going to be easy to close out. That would be uh, 242-491 and 242 We request that those be continued to 411 at the request of the applicant. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And then the, the more recent ones still require some as-building. So 242-1347 and 242-1642 as-building and some other documentation be continued to 425. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next one is 242-1627, uh, a COC request for Great Lake Lane. I, uh, before we get into this, how did you make out with planning, Jen? So, um, on top of um, 
seeking his certificate of compliance. Um, Mr. Zarico is also seeking street acceptance, which puts his certificate of compliance on a very fast Extra. timeline. Um, when we did go out there, and um, I've since received, um, I have the as built plan. I, you have copies of the as built and the proposed. Um, were they both done by Christensen and Sergi? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, for whatever reason, when I first received the as built, it was on a different scale than the proposed, and we've since received the same one, so I've light tabled them both. The discrepancies on anything constructed are very minor, some of which um, the majority of things sought modifications. There's a few minor things where things are different. The, relo the location of the rain gardens is slightly different. Um, the, um, some of the driveways have slightly different configurations, but everything is outside of the 50-foot no-build zone. Um, Mr. Zerico put in a stone wall rather than the required, this was a massive you know, project as far as length of wall required, so you had approved defense and he did put in the stone wall the entire distance. Um, there was a crossing um, on one of the lots to access the upper on the other side, mm -hmm. and there was a um, replication area. It um, is largely successful in that the trees have survived and um, it was overplanted, so probably about 50% of the shrubs have survived, maybe a little bit better. But um, when we went out there, at, just before the snow, suddenly a lot of those, but four were truly dead and you know two aren't going to probably make it um so we discovered almost all of those were of one particular species so clearly that didn't didn't like it there um that said blueberry did you know ravishingly well and um the deer just, didn't get them no it's not deer these are <laughs> just uh, something ate a bunny in the wetland but yeah, that was i don't know what happened to they were, they, like, they were I actually like, touched one and it like pulled out of the ground, like broke off and fell over. I was like, <laughs> no. oh, that's dead. I mean, it, it, it's just strange what happened. Maybe it got too wet or who, who knows, but the blueberry clearly liked it there and he's committed to getting more. Um, again, you know, rough winters, there was some minor erosion in, in two of the detention basins. So at, at the time we last met, um, Tom was going to go and get some sod and get some blueberry bushes and then... I went on vacation and all it did was snow. And we had, yeah, 42 inches of snow within right. the next two weeks. So, <laughs> so he's trying valiantly to we'll wrap up Monday. these minor <laughs> yeah, issues. Yeah. Um, but there's, there, those are, you, oh, I printed lovely photos for you. So you can see, see what the issues are. But I think you have everything in front of you and you understand. <clears throat> well, I, 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 I was with the understanding that you were trying to get a letter from planning. To, to say, let's go to let's go to street acceptance town meetings right around the corner well that's yeah. what we're right. talking about he is just has some these issues here that would require that we would not issue an it coc but he wants to get a street accepted and i understand mm -hmm. that so what he what jim was going to try and do is get a letter stating and I think well, did, yeah i don't that he again could, um the other thing that i had said was outstanding was um the storm scepter we didn't have proof of maintenance but um Tom did pop the cover on that today, and um, it has been cleaned. Yeah. He's working on getting some photos of when it was cleaned, right? Yeah, I sent you photos today. Of, the, of what it looked like today. It doesn't yes. have water in it, but it right. does look fairly clean. I don't know yeah. how, how much water was in there. Could you tell? No, I it's, couldn't, yeah. It was below the um, outlet, but not, um, not empty. So, again, th the other option would be because things again we're just I'm just we were trying to think outside the box the the idea of doing a letter to the planning board there is time I, I did talk yeah. to Jean they do meet again on the we do meet again on the 11th they do meet again after that and the board of selectmen do meet again after that that just puts it a very tight timeline so the other option which you have done before would be to issue the certificate of compliance and I hold it pending the things that <laughs> Yeah. No uh, if there was anybody else sitting at the table, we'd say no. But I, no. I, I, that well, seems like a good that. faith. That's a good faith. You, you, you know, haven't. You know, you that's have good faith. That. You know, we, we could do that, or, or we could, or we could issue the certificate and then issue an enforcement order to mandate the repairs. Either way, you can <clears> get the same thing done. I um, could, can I just elaborate a, just sure. a little, little tiny bit? I mean, just like, not to make the meeting any longer than it has to be. <laughs> Thanks, Jen, for all that. Um, the. Uh, yeah, the, the plantings, uh, you know, I always overplant because we know we have some mortality. We never know how it's going to go. Uh, we still have 100% of what's required. 
uh, but because some of them passed away, we're going to enhance that anyway. So uh, just wanted to clarify that. Um, in terms of the, the, the minor erosion, um, is, is in rain gardens. This, uh, these are in, in people's manicured lawns. They're not remote areas. They're, you know, they're, they're small areas, a couple, maybe twice the size of this desk. We're, we're, we're a tiny little bit you know, overflowed during one of the strong storms, and we just want to um, um, secure in a strip or two of sod just to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Uh, relatively straightforward stuff. Um, um, those are uh, the rain gardens on private property. Yes. Each individual homeowner is required under perpetual maintenance to care for those anyway. Th that's right. And just in regardless the, of extreme exceptions. Yeah. And in, in terms of the just the timing, of this so this this order was was uh, approved uh, around Thanksgiving of fourteen. Uh, that was a really tough winter. I think we had eight feet of snow that winter. We didn't even start site work until May that year because there was still snow in uh, on tax day that year. Uh, so we started um, in May. All of the homes were completed. Um, that was May of 2015. All of the homes were completed and all the lawns were, were, were planted uh, within the grow season of 2016. So you know they've all been maintained, cut, mowed, taken care of by the residents uh, for one or more uh, or two or more seasons. Um, I happen to, you know, again, just in terms of wanting to uh, um, um, to achieve the compliance, uh, you know, I'll be going back onto people's private, you know, private property that they've been taking care of and, and enhancing it a little bit for them. Um, you know, if uh, I mean, I would rather see rather than enforcement order. I just don't like that. I just don't like that word, actually. <laughs> just trying to help. I was just trying to help. No, we, I know. That's what we do with all the folks. Just trying to get we them. We do going. it to Boy Scouts. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Then in, our, in the, uh, in the friendly <laughs> enforcement yeah. orders to make it work. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I'll, honestly, I'll, I'll withdraw that suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. If that's if that's what help out. if that's what gets it, gets it done, that's fine. And just so so that the commission understands, I mean, we. Uh, uh, did not uh, finish pave that road until the very end of, of the last season and that's we would have come in sooner but we didn't pave it until around Thanksgiving uh, we didn't want it to um, uh, uh, to be settling out any because it was a relatively quick build and a quick completion we wanted all of the trenches and everything else there uh, to, to, to get settled before we put the finished coat on everything and we finished coated all driveways in the street all at the same time uh, we did that, that in November otherwise we would have come in you know some time ago uh, because all the construction really has been done there for for well over a year, uh, other than the finished paving. Um, so if it's if it's possible to issue and hold a, a, a compliance, I, I prefer that. We're uh, planning on picking up blueberry bushes tomorrow or Friday. Um, that's the soonest we can get them. Uh, <laughs> and when sod is is available on a pallet, then so we'll you, pick that up. So Jen s said that there's time for you to um, get this done before planning. But the, you have to go in front of selectmen also. Well, yeah, the thing is, uh, what we had laid out with uh, with 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 uh, Gene and with with planning was uh, um, that we would uh, return to planning next week. Um, but if we're going to be on the the selectmen's meeting on the ninth, we actually have to um, uh, mail out um, hearing notices to a butters. I think by either Friday or Monday. I think Jen, if that's and I, and I thought my understanding was that was the. Gene the, the said there was the date. option to do it one one more time if that's okay. what it what it came to. But I mean, in essence, the letter the letter would still be written in that I would let them know that the the board has voted the certificate of compliance, but is, is holding it for um, minor landscaping that needs to be completed prior to. Oh, you do like yeah. you suggested what? approving the COC, and you holding the COC until that's the work is saying. completed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only time, and it's no reflection on you. It's just that. We try and we, we try and stay consistent. Yeah. So if we approve a COC with, with work not being done, yeah. then then that leaves that opens the bond door for everybody. I, I believe that. And, and, yeah. and it's no reflection on you. You've always been forthcoming, and you've always, when you say you're going to do something, you do something. Yeah. So I just I, it's just the commission can vote it any way they want, but I, it to me uh, I I don't like. Uh, as small as it may seem, that everything isn't done, so that we can't sit. That some, or another applicant say, "Well, you let Tom do this." Yeah, I, believe me. The last thing I want to do when I said <laughs> this to, to every every board that I appear before, I don't want to put anyone in a position to do something for me that they couldn't do for anyone else who 
just to clarify, who does things the way I do things. Right. I mean, I think from, again, just a personal comment on that front is that, you know, I think uh, if you held everybody else to the same standard, you could also point to the fact that I'm on every job site. You all know it. Everyone knows it multiple times every day, seven days a week, 365 days. I'm there. Yeah. When we're when we're cleaning catch basins, we're cleaning catch basins. You know, when we're sweeping streets, I have a broom. Yeah. So um, I do. I, the erosion control. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, uh, I, I completely understand and respect that. I, I think, but if other people <clears throat> actually monitored, maintained, and managed their projects just like me, I think you would want to treat them. That way too. It would make it would make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> uh, and, and just to be clear, it, it isn't just Tom that you would be do. You have helped. We've done this before. We've, sure. You've helped right. them so for very minor. That would be. I, I'm in agreement with Jennifer as far as that. It's holding this holding the COC that it is, it is approved, pending the uh, vote. <laughs> well, I know that's my. I think it, as the chairman, we I, that's my going suggestion. The enforcement, it's just another thing you have to explain away. He, and it's not worth explaining. He doesn't like enforcement. It's not worth explaining. <laughs> It, we have just as much <laughs> Chairman, faith in getting gonna, it done the right, doing I'm, it this way. I'm going to move that we issue a COC for the uh, project as requested. Okay. And hold in abeyance for, for the yeah. work to be done. Second. Second. All, those, all those in favor say aye. Just to oh, sorry. Just sorry. Just sorry. Just sorry. Just a post modification fee because you built a wall instead of a fence? <laughs> Did we authorize them to build you a wall? Know, I, also built, I also built a really nice bridge. Oh, it looks yeah. like instead the of putting in a culvert. I don't know if I should have applied for that. I, I, think, I think that was probably the final I think they're going to call it Great Wall Road. Great Wall, <laughs> Road. Great wall <laughs> Lane. We may want to require uh, Recognizing good consideration of paid for the, the value file. of the wall. <laughs> have you seen the bridge? Seriously? I seen, yeah, I have seen the bridge. I have seen the bridge. Seriously, the bridge is really, really Something. I'm really, it's something I'm really proud of. We're going to have to compare it with the bridge on. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to compare it with the bridge down at Hayman, Winter and Hayman. Well, if you bought the lot, <laughs> you could name it whatever you want. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look and see. Because look this is a nice I bridge. have no comment at this time. <laughs> we'll take a road trip down. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's Thank you, Tom. So I'll put together a little list okay. and yep. email it to you and right. do whatever I need to do with Okay, time. and I will too. Thank you, folks, very much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. The next one is, uh, I don't even know why you put this on the agenda. 320 okay. Stephen Street, you're just, you have to approve, you know, sign them and approve them. What just, are we doing now? There was an emergency sewer repair on 320 Stephen Street, um, a blocked line that connects to the main that runs down. I don't even know where that thing goes. I thought, I thought you just That's cross east east country east over the Stevens yeah. land, yeah. So, um, again, it's a, it was on a steep slope. You put in erosion control. I signed the emergency cert, and they did the work the same day. So, or they're doing the work, but I just wanted you to be aware, and you know, you can sign off on it if you. Okay. I, I, generally speaking, I don't like to declare my own emergencies, but the the sewer department did send around the form. They wanted to see the connection form, so I issued the emergency cert to do the work under our, because it, unless it's in a driveway or a roadway, it's not an exempt activity. Mm -hmm. And this was in a cross country line. So. Dealing with storage and resource here, it's, it's the faster you can address it, the it better. There you go. Did you see the one in the hmm? in Anaheim Stadium today? Oh. They the saw uh, oh. line ruptured and started flooding the field with raw sewage. Oh, fun. During, During the game. During the game. During the game. We have so, a little. So you uh, Los sort Angeles of Stadium, it looked lovely. And they were trying to squeegee it out. Stuff yeah, that that it always out. works. And there's the guy yeah. standing and Q-tips. Squeegeeing it. Ugh. Squeegee on, on Astro. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> All right. So, um, must have been awesome. You, know, no, you want to, uh, it's like Courtney. Pardon me? Do you want to vote on that to, to um, yeah, ratify? All those, yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Pose, and that's unanimous. You can pick people who motioned in the second of the <laughs> I believe it was Doug and Al. There you go. <laughs> if that works. It was Doug and Al. Okay. Close All enough. right. So, um, unfortunately, at, at the when you guys reviewed the Mass Ave, we're still within the 21 days to get this out, and I'm all set to get it out. But I just wanted to review with you some of the things that I, I had highlighted. Lots of things to be deleted since they related to the bylaw and not the act, such as the um, expiration. They can, you know, get extensions as often as they like because it's only it's yeah, a bylaw thing. Project tomorrow. Um, 
the wetland crossing thing is a uh, you know no no future wetland crossings. I don't think we want to be saying that's Mass Highway. Mm -hmm. um, no 2550. Um, they will monitor the replication area. That was not to be deleted. The the other was bond. You have bonded Mass Highway projects. Have they have paid one before. Yeah, they they the contractors pay them. Yeah, so. I, yeah. This is a, what, under the water, is that? Yeah. So. Right. So we wouldn't bond land, it. So that, you don't bond it. Right. That's. I just wanted to make sure because we there wasn't any discussion about these things, and I just wanted you to be aware before. I, mm -hmm. um, they don't need a form A affidavit because they're not going to transfer ownership. They are responsible for the O and M. Um, I don't think we can make them submit monitoring reports because they're just not going to do that. No sense setting them up for non-compliance. So for condition 52, which I had all highlighted in here, um, I wrote it to say, all stormwater best management practices shall be maintained in perpetuity according with the here in reference Mass Highway BMP Operation and Maintenance and Appendix D submitted with notice of 10. Evidence of maintenance of stormwater management system shall be of the yeah stormwater shall be provided to the NACC on an annual basis by a registered professional civil engineer during construction because we I think we can require that of them, and the maintenance reports may be requested by the NACC to ensure compliance after a certificate of compliance is issued. So I think if we, they were not maintaining it, I'd be happy to write them a letter saying you know I want to see your maintenance on this, but so not the requiring you, to them to submit reports. That's the best you're going to get out of them. Okay, right. so if you're happy with that, that's that one. Um, do they? I, I didn't recall. Uh, generally, we require um, oil and grease traps in our catch basins. Does the state generally do that, or I, I didn't sure they do. Okay, so and that that would be a requirement of the O and M. After construction, I deleted the underground fuel oils, the fertilizers, and the minimum amount of road salt because we know they're going to do all those things. And no <laughs> snow storage <laughs> signs. We definitely discussed. And so that's it. So if you are happy, that is the order that I will issue. Okay. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. good. And Pause and last time it was Alan Depp, too. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, so that will go out tomorrow. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. Okay. We stand adjourned, Mr. Producer.